Hello guys, welcome or welcome back. Look what I have for today's review. As you can see by the title, this is brand new Natasha Denona's Yucca palette. Let me just take a second and I want you to see my outfit. Well, I think this is pretty cool. Look at the packaging, look at my dress. As I said, I didn't even know that I have Yucca dress. I thought it was super cute. Anyways, let's go to this palette. So this is, as I said, brand new release from Natasha Denona, also in her collection. She has three eye pencils, but today we're gonna be mainly talking about how I created this look. And I think I implemented 12 of 15 shades for today's look, believe it or not. I wanted to try as much as I can to create just one look. In my opinion, this is great summer palette, especially on darker skin tone. Today, just for today's purpose, I did apply a little bit tan foundation just because I wanted to see how it looks once I'm a little bit tan because you'll see later how pale I am. This palette is made in Italy, 24 months shelf life and it cost 69 US dollars or because this was shipped in Europe because I pre-ordered this one from Natasha's side the cost of everything was almost 100 euros. Yeah, it was, I think it was 93 euros, um, even with a discount code, but the shipping went up when I put a discount code, so I don't know what happened with that. These are the shades. Let me just, first of all, let me show you swatches. So Plantasia is sparkling, foiled, green, and bronzy rosewood duochrome. So as, I'm, as I said, um, this is one of my favorite shades from this palette. I think it's beautiful. It is super stunning. I'm having it under my eyebrow. Um, the thing is, I think I put, at least on this side, I put too much. Can you see the reflection? Like, we have literally duochrome, small, sparkly glitters. Maybe you can see better, like this. See how it shifts? It's nothing too crazy, but these fine pigments, once you apply them, and I applied Fix Plus, <laughs> which is Magic Radiance, it gave more radiance than already is, and I would like to try this one on its own because it's super pigmented. I love that. The next one is Catalia. I think this is my least favorite shade. I thought this one will be something like I used from NYX Midnight Chaos palette. It's the perfect dark green shade, if you, in my opinion. Um, I would love to have that shade if this shade would be that shade. I think it would, <laughs> this would be my perfect palette with this color story. Um, the opacity of this one wasn't too good. It's just I feel how, that it swatches poorly, so something to be added on top of something, but if you want to have that punch of the color, I'm afraid you're not going to get it with this shade. It is matte, medium, dark, old green. It doesn't feel like a matte once you swatch it for whatever reason. Morebi is sparkling foil mustard gold. Another stunning, stunning shade. Let me swatch this one for you as well. Beautiful. I could have even applied this one on my underneath my brow bone. Usually I would like to have like lighter matte color, but because these are standing so good on their own, I am satisfied with the choice of these light shades. Next we have Assessia. It is matte golden olive, another stunning shade. Next is Kamu Kamu. This shade is so vibrant. Matte, vibrant lime. It is in my inner corner. It is so beautiful, so pigmented. I love this one. Tipu is matte, dusty, mustard green. Uh, another shade that I love that you can incorporate even if you are doing just your crease, just to add a little, a little bit dimension to your crease. I'm not sure if I know how to pronounce the next one. E L Y S C N sparkling foiled medium taupe. So this is a little bit of a different punch of a undertone in this palette, which I do love. I do have that one on my lower lash line because I wanted a pop of color because for the most part up here we have on my eyelid, we have mattes. Valley is another beautiful medium shade that you can even use on your crease. 
matte dusty mustard brown citrine is matte medium mustard citrine color ray is metallic green gold i haven't used this one today but again let me swatch this one for you it is beautiful shade as well flax is matte dark brown so that that was my base today together with the willow shade i combine those two to create this dark outer corner fushi is matte light medium mustard yellow fushi is cream to powder once you swatch it it is really you can feel how different the texture is once you swatch it and it goes a little bit harsh but once you apply it it is totally dry and i do have that color it goes perfectly with the camu camu and citrine if you're going to do gradient colors then that is beautiful beautiful transition makia is sparkling foil medium golden olive beautiful shade having that one as well ixia matte burnt caramel another nice transition or outer corner shade if you would like to have a little bit transition willow is matte medium dark teal green i was thinking for this one for the willow shade it's going to be a little bit more bright than it is but turns out to be a little bit more darker than i thought which i actually prefer at least for today's look without any further ado let's jump into this tutorial if you want to see how i achieved this look before anything i did prime my eyes and my eyebrows are already done that's the way i like to do my makeup first now i am going to use the darkest coloring here now the darkest coloring here i would say is flax but it's not the undertone that i want to create for today's look so i'm going to do something that is challenging and i will mix flax together with the shade willow on a small pointy brush this is nyx professional i can't remember the name because it's been wiped but um I just hope this is going to work. I know this today is going to be pretty dramatic look. But this is the first look that came to my mind when I saw the palette. I just thought that Calathea would be much more darker shade than it is. When you swatch it, it seems like a little bit more sheer and lighter than I would like to. It's not a bad color, but it's just that I was... I would prefer that we have something much more deeper. Okay, this is going to be working, I guess. I will try to blend this. No, this is a true challenge. We are talking about getting even colors with two different colors. The good thing is the undertone is neutral on both of these colors. Okay, I think that's about it. Now I'm going to blend this again. Why am I starting like this? It's because this will create a outline. It will give specific look to my eye, it will elongate it. It will create a total shape for everything else that we are going to do later. As I would say, just trust the process. And now I'm going to take a little bit more fluffier brush. Whenever I'm packing eyeshadow, I do like to use brushes that are much more stir and harsh. And now just to diffuse the color, I like to do this. Also, I did stretch my base all the way here because I never know where I'm going to end up with the eyeshadow. You do want to make sure that everything is blended really, really well. I know it's dark color, but give it a try. Once everything is blended well, I'm taking Vaseline. And now I will just create another shape, kind of, because I will erase a little bit of color the reason for this is i will later pack some different eyeshadow in here and create different texture make sure once you used vaseline everything is clean at the end otherwise if you mix it with any of the products you will just have a mess but it's the easiest way to make a cut crease or anything else when you want to remove a certain makeup product if necessary, go again. Even though we are working with two colors, I did not have issues applying this one. For a second, I just thought that building color on top of the color on top of the color, like it will fade, but that's not the case. If we have a good Natasha Denona usual product quality, we should not have that issue. Now I'm taking the same two shades with a smaller brush. The reason for that is because I will create another guideline for this look. 
if you are using lighter colors and don't be afraid to take you can even take bigger brushes but but just because this is darker color i'm just using smaller brush listen if i go too low i will make a cut crease later i can just manage to make the shape that i want for now i'm just packing this eyeshadow and i will blend it later you can see how nicely it packs now this is one of the ways you can truly test the eyeshadows especially when we are talking about darker colors when we're talking about neutral lighter shades like you won't be able to see that much of a mistake or having issues with the blending but if for example if you're a makeup artist you want to test different textures and undertones to see what works the best now i'm taking a little bit bigger brush than i used before and and this is the shape that i'm going for i'm so excited you guys i haven't done this look in a while and i think this is still this look is still my profile picture on uh, facebook my personal page now I will try to, not to connect, but just to come as close, close that I can towards this right here. This looks really nice with the brown, darker eyes as I have. Definitely this palette is screaming summer. I know some of you would think maybe, or I even saw in the comments that it reminds them of fall. Maybe if you're talking about color story, but when we are talking about deeper skin tones, if we are talking about tanned skin, then these colors, they work amazing, you guys. And I totally understand why these colors are such a hit during summer. I'm so curious to see at the end how this is going to look. I do know that the colors will incorporate really nicely because of the color story, obviously, that we have in here. Shaping of the eye usually takes the most portion of my time. If you're not doing this, I know this is a little bit advanced, but give it a shot, try. You'll see how it will make a total difference to your eye shape. Now we're going to create a transition and first thing I'm going to do is to use shade Ixia. Also, I do have a lot of fallout in here. You know what, maybe for this one, I first, I do need a smaller brush, but the pigment is so strong. I just hope I will not have to go back with a darker color because it is mixed with the two and that will be a bit challenging. I will take a clean brush just to diffuse the edges because right now I will go with a different color. Cannot wait to get to the shimmers. Now I'm taking shade Valley. It is beautiful, another neutral. Let me show you the swatch. Now I'm about to mix another two colors. This is Tipu and Citrine. Tipu is too dark and Citrine is too bright. So mixture of two just gives me what I need. And I am working just on the edges. And I also know it is a lot of colors, but I do want to try as much as I can from this palette as well. So you can see the whole specter of the colors. See, now this is really beautiful transition. I know this right here has to be done later, but look at this transition from the darkest to the lightest at the moment. Now, definitely one of the most challenging parts of today's tutorial will be this cut crease, so I'm taking Vaseline. Now, this is optional. If you do wanna have like really harsh cut crease, go ahead and do this step. If not, just apply next color without the cut crease. You will have softer transition, but this is what I am going for today. Just making sure that I take all the Vaseline. Also, I am using flat brush for this. Now, if you watch my tutorials, you'll know that black canvas from P. Louise is the best product for cutting, setting the crease. Actually, you can use anything else after that. I won't go too crazy with it because I do need to layer my eyeshadows on top of it. And these are pretty dry. And just for today's review, it's good to see how eyeshadows will stick to the base as well. Base like this. Just want to see how they perform on a regular base as well as paint. Now I'm gonna go a little bit crazy with the color. So first it will be Camu Camu color. This one is super bright, almost like a neon shade. So this will really pop up, especially on a darker skin tone. Next I'm using this, this is cream to powder. This is her unique texture. 
um, and I really like how this swatched. When you take a swatch, you get a little bit what is this? Like the texture is really weird because it is creamy. But once you swatch it, once you apply it, it sets to a powder. We also have a lot of these textures in her My Dream palette. Till this day is honestly one of my favorite color stories. Different undertones, textures and everything. I love it. Fushi one, I do need to apply it a little bit more. I don't know if it's because of the eyeshadow texture or because this is going on top of the paint. Maybe, maybe both, but it's fine. I just need to press a little bit more and apply a little bit more of the color. But look how beautiful this pops on brown eyes. You know what, I was thinking to put a contact lenses later, but we'll see. <laughs> maybe I'll throw one eye with and the other without. Also would love to create a second look with this, but just time-wise, I don't know how will be possible. I really miss you guys because I haven't been able to upload now for a while because me and my husband just bought a house together with the three apartments right next to it. And we are into renting business as well. And at the moment it's just too much. So hopefully can't wait after the season. Um, I'll go full speed on YouTube and that makes me so happy. Actually, this part right here may be the most challenging, I think. So now we're going to go with the liner. If you are purchasing one of the Natasha's liners, so the darkest one will be as well perfect with this look. Um, I don't have that one, but I am going with the MCG eyeliner from se from 77 from England in number 77 and slowly starting to build my liner on the outer portion of my eye. Now the point is to connect this liner with the dark color that we already have. I'm going to use a small brush just to make a transition. As well, I'm going to use a black pencil. This one is from Pixie. I'm really loving this one. This is Endless Silky Eye Pen. It is matte black color. But yeah, like I said, I really love this one. And it dries really quickly, so it won't smudge. Again, typically when I use products like this, I do use waterproof products, of course. Against pencils from this collection, I think those three pencils go perfectly with this collection. So I will just improvise today when it comes to pencil. Just filling in my inner corner as well. Right now I'm going with the flax and willow shade again on top of the darkest one. Now we have to connect this light color with the dark just to have a transition. It is nice how it gets to lift your eye. And now again another transition that we have is Xia. So these three colors, they just make beautiful transition from the lightest to the this color that I'm applying right now. All I have to do now is to blend it well. Again, you do need the smaller brushes when you are working with a smaller space like this, regardless of your eye shape. Now I'm gonna take a bigger blending brush and just with the Wally shade, just to do transition on the other edge of my eye. I can also add some Ixia color. We just need a little bit more transition towards the skin. If necessary, take a clean brush and work the edges. I will try Calathea color, but in my opinion, it wasn't that much pigmented, like texture of this color is a little bit more, oh, the opacity is not what I would like it to be for this look, so I'll just pass on that one. As you can see, I used only mattes, but when it comes to other textures, shiny textures, I'm just gonna use Plantasia. This seems like a duochrome. I think this one is duochrome, actually. If I left this under my eyebrow area like this, it will look stunning, but I do wanna try. It's so pigmented. Wow, wow, this is literally, wow, glitters, wet glitters. How do I blend this now? <laughs> okay, I will need, wait, I need a different brush, dry brush, because I did apply some, but you don't have to, because this is 
good on its own. I did apply a little bit of Fix Plus. And this one is Radiance Fix Plus, so... I will definitely have to test this shade on its own. This is super pigmented, super interesting texture. Well, yeah, definitely have to try this one more. Now, let me go on the under eye area. I do wanna keep inner corner really, really light, but the rest is going to be dark. The reason is for the contrast that these colors will give to my brown eyes. I just want to see how that will look as a really light color on a even darker skin tone as I cannot see right now but I know for a fact that will look really nice. So first I'm applying eye pencil which I was thinking to make deep green as well in my waterline actually. But you know what for now let's just keep it this way. So I'll just blend this pencil. This outer corner is really important. You just want to drag this color a little bit down so it can connect with everything that we created on our eyelid. Now I'm going with the shade Willow and Flex. I wasn't thinking I'm going to apply this color, but I'm going in with Elation color and maybe a little bit Makia. You know what? These shimmers are super bright. I even feel like this is a bit advanced new texture. I do want to apply Camu Camu in my inner corner and this will pop. Wow, this is beautiful. Look how bright this is. Beautiful. And then again, I'm layering Citrine just about next to it, beautiful. And I'm now using the most perfect brush for this. And I will drag this to make a little bit colorful. Now, one shade that I miss right now is this Makia shade. It is beautiful. I also did add just a tiny bit of Makia on my crease just to make it a little bit more pop up. I'm just going to finish my lashes just to put some mascara and um, when it comes to false eyelashes, of course, my favorite are the naked lashes in 421. I just want to stock on this for the rest of my life because these, these seem perfect. Um, even though my look at the moment is just too intense, I could easily put double coat of these lashes. They still work just fine. Um, and I'm telling you, for the most eye shades, these lashes work magic. These are hands down my favorite lashes. Um, sometimes I do want to change them or add a bit more dramatic ones. Uh, but if you're doing clients, you would love, love, love these lashes. And um, I'll just add a little bit of mascara on my lower lashes. I will finish off my face and I will be right back with you with my final thoughts. So this is of course first impressions of this palette and I'll say how I loved this different undertones of these medium green olive and mustardy undertones. I think that fact besides these couple of really really shiny shades is something that I'm most excited about this palette. Again, like I said, I would like for this palette to have like one really, really deep green undertone eyeshadow, which we don't have in here. That's the reason why I have to mix wax and willow all the time for the outer corner, for the inner corner. I love the transitions of these brights. These brights are so beautiful and combining them with the rest of the collection with the eye pencils, I think that's a perfect match. I will of course update you as much as I can regarding everything that's going on at the moment around me with this house renovations, but I can't wait to get back after everything is finished so I can get more into filming tutorials and reviews and stuff that you would like of course to hear from me and just let me know if this is something that you would like to wear for this season, is this more of a summer time, is this your style or you think this is something more appropriate for the winter? Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and if you tried this palette, what was your experience? Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in my next one really soon. Guys, have a nice day and I'm out. <laughs> Ciao.